I'm here in Medjugorje at the Blue Crosses and I'm with Father. What's your name? John Marshall. Well, to Father John, where are you from? Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. First time here? First time in Medjugorje, yes. And how is it for you to be here? Well, I would say that if I'm a man of short a few words, which I'm normally not, yeah. I would say my cup is full. full. Cool. How would you describe it for people who don't know Medjugorje? Well, um, I think we all well, better get out of the road, right? Yeah. Yep. I, uh, definitely we don't come here unless you're invited. Yeah. But Our Lady invites everyone to come. Yeah. And so, uh, and I think we all come at the right place and the right stages in our life. You know, I, I heard about Medjugorje maybe about 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, kind of like, mm, kinda, wow, that's kind of a, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, and then um, I maybe heard about it, you know, here and there, you know, growing up and. Uh -huh. Um, and then, you know, like 10 years ago, I, almost 10, you know, I'll be a priest in June of this year, I'll be 10 years as a priest, I thought, I, I should go to Medjugorje, mm -hmm. but never got around to it or things came up and just this last year, you know, my name got referred to a gentleman who wanted to do another trip to Medjugorje and, mm -hmm. and I had already been thinking, I really like to go to Medjugorje. And then all of a sudden, just how everything aligned um, that our, our lady just said, now this time, now is the time to come. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's our last day. We head about back to Portland uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow morning, uh -huh. uh, just in time for Holy Week. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's been a it's been an incredible experience, um, not just for myself, but for the group that I'm with. There's mm -hmm. 34 of us, and mm -hmm. and just all the people that I've ran into, and just seeing um, real miracles happening, mm -hmm. you know, uh, transformations occurring. In uh, which way can you describe it? Um, for me, it's just, uh, I just, my, my heart is full. Uh, it's just full of just, uh, Mary really wants us to fall in love with her son. Mm -hmm. uh, she's truly bringing others to Jesus, her son. And I've always thought, you know, of course, the priest's role is, yeah, celebrate the Eucharist, celebrate the sacraments. But in context, it's about bringing others to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And coming here now, it's bringing others with Mary mm -hmm. to her son Jesus That's about because I can't do it by myself yep. I need her help and so uh, but first I had to bring myself here mm -hmm. you know and to find that own need for peace and healing because uh, you know we're priests we're human you know yes, we have our exactly. issues we have our own sins you know that's you know we, we also have to say those words I am unworthy that you should enter under my roof and so yes we're unworthy um, and we, we know the, the struggles that priests have, uh, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I also have come here to, uh, A, to give thanks to Almighty God for the, the privilege of being a priest and for Our Lady keeping me safe mm -hmm. the last 10 years. But truly also just, I need, to be he I need to be healed. I need to be healed from whatever wars and storms are going on in my heart, mm -hmm. uh, my struggles, my sins, my, my sh you know, my wounds, you know, shame and rejection and fear and um, you know the list goes on and just asking Our Lady you know yes we should be praying for peace in our troubled world but the, the world also exists right in our hearts and uh, for a priest we need to start for our own priestly heart um, before we start being a healer for others um, you know Pope Francis reminds us priests that a good confessor is one that is a good penitent is one that approaches the sacrament regularly well if we as priests are meant to be healers, yeah. we need to constantly be going out and seeking healing ourselves. Wow, beautiful. And I see you have the rosary in the hand. Yes. Why do you pray the rosary? I, I, I am I'm ashamed to say yeah, this, but uh, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say that for the first couple of years of my priesthood, I was probably neg negligent on praying the rosary. Mm -hmm. um, probably in the last couple of years, um, you know, all of us faced the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, when we had to say those horrible words as priests that there's no mass. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember walking into the day that we were told that we couldn't gather anymore. And, uh, but during those days of COVID, as much as they were painful for our people and of course painful for us priests, because who wants to celebrate Holy Week with just 10 people? Mm -hmm. um, I really started to pray a lot more. Mm -hmm. And um, little by little, our, our mother just said, why have you forgot? <laughs> Here I am with you. You're the one that's forgotten me. I haven't forgotten you. And uh, so I don't go a day uh, having my rosary in my pocket, mm -hmm. you know, praying the rosary. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I would say coming here, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't prayed so many rosaries in a day in my life. Mm -hmm. And wanting now to see, okay, how do I keep this momentum going? Just maybe not just say one rosary, maybe say all three or all four. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and the rosary just, uh, I just 
bless those rosary with those kids. And I says, yeah, beautiful, I thought. You know, uh -huh. it's uh, not just holding our mother's hand or, you know, it's our mother helping us understand more and more about the love of her son. You know, because meditating upon her, holding her hand, drawing close to her heart, she's teaching us through those mysteries, joyful, sorrowful, mm -hmm. glorious, and luminous, mm -hmm. about her son. That's what, she, that's what she's all about, is get to know my son. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll help you with it. So every Hail Mary is her drawing us close to her heart, closer to her son. Wow, powerful. And you know, you said the confession is a central point here in, in Medjugorje. Yeah. What would you tell as a priest to people? Maybe they listen now, they want to confess 20 years, they mm -hmm. didn't go. What would, and they are fearful to go. What would you sure. tell them? Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, and I know many people have had bad experiences in mm -hmm. the confessional. You know, maybe they caught father on a bad day or you know, but I, sometimes you have to separate who's in the box and recognize it's Jesus there. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and ultimately, there's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would say a number of my brother priests, we're, we're merciful, compassionate, uh, just instruments in which a person can hear these powerful words, I absolve you, I forgive you. And it's not me it's not any other priest speaking it's jesus speaking to us and so whether it's been one year 10 years 50 years mm -hmm. the time is right mm -hmm. and i would say uh the last uh, seven eight days of being here and hearing confessions every night i mean of course the miracle of the eucharist we can't we can't totally for, forget that mm -hmm. but the real miracles also are happening outside in the confessionals and people just coming in and you know and just saying what's heavy on your heart mm -hmm. you know what's what's what is that war in your heart? What is that uh, division mm -hmm. in your heart? And just lay it out there, mm -hmm. you know? And the moment we can take ownership of it and just say it, mm -hmm. it's no longer in the darkness, mm -hmm. it's in the light. And then Jesus can, through Mary, can heal this, especially through the sacrament, that our Lord can take it mm -hmm. and replace whatever we have filled those voids in our hearts the, uh, with whatever addictions or resentment or shame. <laughs> No sin is too big for God to forgive, and it just we just have to have the courage to um, to just lay it out, you know. Speak it out, no. Speak Bring it out it to the light. Well, uh, I remember me. something one of my uh, seminary yeah. professors said is that we're only as sick as our secrets. Yes. You know, and, and the devil wants us to keep that secret. Yeah. Because we know he knows that if we keep it inside, it's going to eat at us. It's going to be like a, it's going to be a cancer. Yeah. You know. Um, but as we heard in the gospel on Wednesday, mm -hmm. you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And who's the truth? It's Jesus. Jesus. And so being in relationship with him, because Mary, is, our mother here in Medjugorje, is drawing people to her son to get to know him. Mm -hmm. And when we know him, mm -hmm. not just know of, mm -hmm. you know, that's the sad thing about English language, by the way, we have just one word for no, <laughs> but we're actually in a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. We're going to see those things in our life that he wants to bring out for us, or we, should, we need to bring out so that we can be completely whole again. And so, in a full life, as Jesus said, oh, and living in fullness, right. joy, and peace. And it's not about how few times we go to confession; it's how many times we recognize that we need to go. So, you know, yeah, the church says once a year. Mm -hmm. I think Our Lady's advice to go once a month is, I think, for all of us, mm -hmm. what we should be doing because we all will. We've all we all have things we just need to bring out. Mm -hmm. The doctor can't heal us unless we start talking about the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Same with our Lord, you know. Yeah, He knows. Mm -hmm. But it's also for us to say, yeah, that's happened. And I don't want this to have any more control. So for those who haven't been to confession, uh, it's been since the, before the pandemic, or mm -hmm. it's been 10, 20, 30 years, what are you waiting for? Yeah. You have nothing to lose. And somebody said, you clean your house, the dust. Mm -hmm. That means you can go through for as much dust there as you go. You know, it can be every week, it can be every month. Yeah, yeah. Until, until our dying breath, breath, you know, is where we, you know, it's not, like I said, it's, it's being a Christian is a constantly, uh, being a follower of Jesus, it's mm -hmm. constantly becoming the best version of ourselves. Some days we're going to do pretty good and there's some days we're going to fall back and we're going to fall off that, off the course. What, 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 the devil wants us to stay there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our Jesus wants to lift us up and say, rise, take up your mat and go. And that's, what we're, that's, the, that's forgiveness. And that's what we see in the Gospels again and again. Jesus wanting to restore our healing. And if we have, if we're just nervous, mm -hmm. ask Our Lady. She'll help us. She'll bring us there. Amen. And you know, a lot of people here in Medjugorje ask for their vocation. How can somebody find the vocation to be married? A lay person, 
consecrated to be a, a father, mother, mm -hmm. or a priest? How can they find this? Or well, none? Yeah. I think I think the first and foremost, uh, of all, all of us have been called. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think that each and every one of us spoken into existence, you know, God has a, has had a, has a specific plan for each and every one of us. Of course, that plan is uh, to be with him in, uh, in this life and in the next, of course. Mm -hmm. But we have a, all of us have a unique vocation. How are we going to live out that, that discipleship? Mm -hmm. I think the first question we should ask ourselves is, what do you want for me? Jesus, what do you want for me? You know, because mm -hmm. that's where we're going to find mm -hmm. um, our truest fulfillment. You know, and um, you know, happiness is not in, in possessions. Mm -hmm. Happiness is not in, you know. I mean, yo, yeah. I mean, yeah. Nice to have a nice car, a nice house. You know, especially in our Western world, our first world. You know, we think about that. It's the amount of stuff we have. That's mm -hmm. happiness. No, mm -hmm. it's about doing something for others. Because a well-lived life. Mm -hmm. Pope, uh, Pope Francis said this in his uh, Evangelii Gaudium and the Joy of the Gospel that. You know, one that a life that is geared and directed towards service, mm -hmm. towards living for others, mm -hmm. is a life well lived. You know, that it's just, it's, it's basically living out our full potential because if God is all about giving Himself mm -hmm. to creation, mm -hmm. and we've been made in the image and likeness of that, mm -hmm. we're only going to find our truest fulfillment, our vocation, mm -hmm. when we feel drawn to something where we can give our life mm -hmm. for another, mm -hmm. for others. Um, and so I would say for those who are coming here to Medjugorje asking, you know, mm -hmm. what do you want from me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Just open yourself up and ask those, or just say those words of, of Samuel. Mm -hmm. Here I am, Lord. I mm -hmm. come to do your will. And Samuel approached the presence of God with an open heart. And the Lord led him where he most needed him most. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And, you know, may people also ask to have a personal relationship with Christ. How can they have that, you know? You have it, I see it. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a relationship is not a relationship unless there's communication. Yeah. You know, so how, do you, how can you be in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus if you don't know him? Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to get to know him, first and foremost, in the sacraments, mm -hmm. especially the Eucharist and confession, mm -hmm. um, to get to know him through scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's a sad thing when our brothers and sisters in other Christian communities know the Bible them better than we do. Uh, but we're fed with scripture at mass. We're fed with scripture in the rosary. Mm -hmm. We're fed through scripture. I mean, we have no excuse these days with, with tablets and Androids and iPhones. It's right there. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you who are English, English speakers, you know, we have that wonderful app called Hallow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have Father Mike Smith, who's reading the Bible in the year for us. Uh, and you can do that every year. You can do the, uh, there's this other, uh, Jonathan Rumi is reading, you know, the Gospels. Mm -hmm. um, so there's really no excuse not to really meditate upon the scriptures because it's the word that became flesh. It's living word. Mm -hmm. And it's us taking in that word and saying, speak Lord, for mm -hmm. your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. That's how we get to know him. And if we need help, our mother can help us with a rosary. Amen. And she leads to the son from mm -hmm. a Protestant friend. That's my Vienna. And what is the role? Maybe now there's a Protestant listening very carefully. What is the role of Mary? We do, we, she's not a goddess. We are not worshiping you know, her. Can you explain a bit the role of her? Well, I think it begins with uh, our, our own personal relationship with our mothers, whether they are our natural mothers or our adopted mothers. or We would, <laughs> our mothers, want what is best for their sons and daughters. Uh, our mothers, uh, their pure life and pure joy is seeing their sons and daughters thrive. Um, and so a mother is the one who, <laughs> my mom always told me this. Mm -hmm. uh, she always says this. She says, you're the only one mm -hmm. that knows how my heart sounds. And so a mother, is someone that has a special connection with their child. And so as far as those who may, you know, these Catholics and, you know, they have this thing about Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of God. Mm -hmm. Well, she's your mother too. And she knows And you. there on the cross, Jesus said to all the disciples, you know, there's a reason why John the Evangelist didn't say to, Jesus said to John, he said to the beloved, to the, the disciple whom he loved, mm -hmm. behold your mother. And he meant that because every person is a, who is a disciple of Jesus Christ, Jesus is saying in scripture mm -hmm. that's recorded, here is your mother. So that same relation we have with our natural mothers mm -hmm. is the same relation we have with the mother of God. 
the mother of peace with mm -hmm. Mary. And a little promotion at the end. For the priesthood, maybe there's somebody listening to become a priest. What, what, is, in, what is it to be a priest? I think a lot of people mm -hmm. don't, can't discern because they don't right. know priesthood. Priesthood, How would you describe sure. Yeah? I think the first thing that I've always been told by when I say to a young man or to parents, like, have you, have you ever talked about priesthood to your child? Have you talked about priesthood to your kid? And sometimes the first response is, oh, you know, that doesn't sound like a, a, a nice life. Yeah. Or I'll sometimes hear kind of uh, self, selfish parents, well, we want grandchildren. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what does your child want? What does your child want? What does God want, right? And when I talk to, you know, youth, teenagers, high school students, college students, I say, we should think less about what we have to give up because we really don't give up. It's what we give back because we get so much in return as priests. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for any young man, for any man who, who just that idea of a priesthood or wanting to be a priest, it's not just there because you thought it. God wants you, God wants you to think about this even further mm -hmm. and don't think about the cons, I guess, the way, don't think about it, <laughs> but it's, that, that, that's even not of a concern for any of us priests. Mm -hmm. What it is, is our love for Jesus. Any vocation is, is, is a manifestation of our love for Jesus, and especially for us priests, also in love for the people. Mm -hmm. So for those who are just, they feel in their heart, they thought about it, there's, not, there's no wrong in continuing to think about it. Mm -hmm. Talk to someone about it. Maybe talk to a priest that you trust mm -hmm. and to see where it goes because you have nothing to lose you have nothing to lose just because you entered the seminary mm -hmm. doesn't mean we're going to be laying hands on you and ordaining you it's it's the seminary is a place for discernment mm -hmm. and thanks be to god men who do go to seminary do mm -hmm. end up becoming priests and they can be like mary <laughs> they bring jesus to the people like mary brought jesus to elizabeth you know mm -hmm. and the role of mary in the life of a priest she is the mother of priests She's our inspiration in carrying out that important mission of bringing people to Jesus. And so uh, I would really strongly say to those who are contemplating priesthood or have thought about it, don't be ashamed. Uh, uh, don't think about, you know, what you can't do. Think about what you can do when you trust when you're trusting our Lord Jesus. Because it's the same thing he would, God would say as he said it to Mary even when she was called to be the, the mother of the Savior. Mm -hmm. Nothing's impossible for God. Amen. And God choose, doesn't choose the qualified. He qualifies those he chooses. Amen. At the end, what would you tell people? Why should they maybe come on time to Medjugorje? Why should they come to Medjugorje? Well, um, God... Uh, of course, you know, we don't have to go very far to experience our Lord. You know, our parish churches, every tabernacle has Jesus, you know, and uh, even in our homes, you know, there's the presence of Jesus and, you know, and Our Lady's not too far away. She's right there as well. But there's places uh, throughout our world where they at one time were not on the map. They were... Um, insignificant villages and towns where um, something incredible and extraordinary occurred. Um, no one ever thought about Medjugorje until 1981 and now after 40, what, 30 plus years now, almost 40, 40 years I guess, yeah, 40, 42, 42 years now, mm -hmm. millions are here. And so I think uh, coming to Medjugorje is to realize that no matter how in insignificant or off the map we may think we are individually, you know, of all six, seven billion people on this planet, mm -hmm. that each and every one of us are special. Each and every one of us are, you, are beloved. And coming to Medjugorje is to remind yourself of that specialness in which God relishes and, and delights in, uh, in you and in me. Thank you so much. For You're welcome. Thank you. Father. You're welcome.